this is the beginning process, right? Mm -hmm. So can you walk us through what you're doing while you do it so that like we can get an understanding of like your process, but also other people can understand the process of making cider. Most definitely. So um, we already have our fermented pear base. Um, it's at 10 and a half percent. Um, so for our small batch stuff, we typically uh, make a tea, um, some sort of tea. Today we're doing the coconut and key lime. So we have a bunch of coconut shavings. We have key lime zest and juice. Um, we let that sit overnight to extract as much flavor, natural flavor as possible. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to strain everything here. Um, and then we're going to pump our pear base into our uh, Fred over here. Um, add our tea and then any additional flavorings. Um, so we're going to use the coconut amaretti and the key lime amaretti today. Perfect. Well, let's see the magic start. It's our full strength pear base uh, mixed with all these other flavors too. Here, so Many more videos. Uh, it's ten and a half percent. So when we, alcohol? oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. That we're always like when we're dosing wow. and tasting. That's really good. That's good. Yeah. So that's that's it's key lime zest, key lime juice. Yeah, I get the zest a lot. Cinnamon sticks and shredded coconut, just straight up soaked. And, and in a in a double strength pear base, so it's stronger than it will be. We're done straining the the tea base that you guys use all the natural ingredients with. What's the next step? So we actually have our pear base in here. Um, so I'm gonna pump half of this in, so 17 and a half gallons um, from here into here, and then we'll add the tea, uh, water, and then any additional flavorings that we think we need to get to where we want. So why are you taking it from your larger tank to your smaller tank? Because we're just doing a small batch today. Um, it's usually what we do when we want to try out new flavors. Um, so we're just going to do, instead of doing like 490 gallons in here, we're just going to do 31 gallons, test it out in the um, tap room and see how guests enjoy it. See how the customers like it, huh? Cool. So I'm going to open everything up. So we have our half of our pear base in there. Um, this is gonna be the tea that we just made with the key lime and the coconut. Um, so it adds that extra flavor in there. So I'm just gonna dump that directly in. So once you add the base tea into the pear base, how many gallons are you now working with? Um, so we should be about 19 gallons, if I have my calculations correct. Yeah, it's right about there. Perfect. Um, since we usually aim for 6% alcohol, um, the pear base is 10 and a half as opposed to our apple base is 12%. So that one's the easy cut in half, half water, half um, apple base, but this one is a little bit more math. So you have to go up on the base a little bit and then um, a little bit less water to achieve that strength there. So she's making that molasses syrup right there to add a little bit of sweetness as well. Um, we'll probably end up adding like tannins, um, malic acid, citric acid, um, minimal amount to see, get that mouthfeel and everything that we want on there. And so what will those ingredients add to the cider? So the malic's gonna add like a mouthfeel to it. Okay. Um, the citric is gonna be like a little bit more um, citrus there. So intensifies the lime, the lime juice that we're using. So it's gonna add like a little bit of tartness? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Um, and then the tannins kind of dries it out. It's a natural occurring thing in like apples. Um, so it's just the powder that we use, the tannins. Um, it's gonna add a little bit more mouthfeel, dry it out, give you a nice like kind of tang on the tongue as well. Okay. Um, all those combined is just gonna kind of fullify the cider that we're doing. And then the sweetness component, instead of using like cane sugar, you guys are gonna use some molasses? Yeah, we might use some cane sugar as well, but we're gonna try molasses. out the molasses. <laughs> So we're gonna have our molasses syrup that we did some black peppercorns and some clove, and then um, mix it with water and kind of heated it up to get everything blended together. So I have half a, about a half a gallon here. I'm just gonna throw that in there to add a little bit of sweetness and try and mimic like a rum flavor as well from the molasses. Um, then I'm gonna go in and fill it up to about 32 gallons, give us a couple gallons to play with. Um, this is gonna dilute it down to about 
7% minus those couple gallons that we have to play with and add more flavorings and try and get it to where we want it. And so you know the ratio of water because of how much cider you pumped into the tank, is that exactly, correct? Exactly, yeah. Okay. So if it was, like our apple base is 12% uh, alcohol. Um, so that one's easy, it's half water, half of our apple base. Um, this one is a little bit more math, so it's, you're gonna go up to about two to three gallons um, to kind of differentiate that 1.5% alcohol. So now we're gonna add some citric acid, some malic acid, and some tannins. We're gonna help make it a full mouth feel and add some citrus and kind of dry it out a little bit. All right, and that's all gonna go directly in. And then next we are gonna add some coconut cream extract for Amaretti. Um, when we tried this, we did like a little sample um, with the key lime and the coconut. The key lime was a lot more strong. So we're gonna do the full four ounces today of the coconut cream. And then we're gonna go really slow with the key lime extract. So now we're gonna add our key lime extract. Um, when we did our small sample, um, we noticed that the key lime went a lot farther than the coconut. So we're gonna start with about an ounce, or about a gram here. And we can always add more in, um, since it doesn't have fermentable sugar and we aren't worried about re-fermentation. All right, with that, um, we still have about five gallons to play with, so we'll probably blend it up and see what we need to add um, if we need to make any adjustments as well. So. So how do you get it to mix in now that it's in the tank? So we actually use our CO2 line. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna hook that up down here and just put it on slow, so. Um, it'll add CO2 in there and kind of just mix everything up um, naturally and take a look in there. Kind of just adds a steady jet stream of uh, CO2 through there. So let it go for a couple minutes and then. interesting. Now you can smell a little bit of coconut, but... Uh, taste it. Taste it. Mm. Yum. Getting there, though. That's good. Yeah, it's real you good. really get the coconut like at the end. So you had mentioned that you guys still have about five more gallons to work with, then that's just kind of your wiggle room for when you're doing R&Ds and like trial and error batches. How how would you anticipate the flavor change once you added the five gallons of water? What would you do if it, because it would dilute the flavor, right, that you already have. So what, what would you do to get the flavor back to where it is now once you add the additional water? Um, so basically, we're aiming for about 35 gallons of yield here. Um, so we have about five gallons of wiggle room. Um, so we would take that one seventh ratio of every single thing we put in there. Like if it was perfect right now, we want to just the extra five gallons to be exactly make no difference to where it's at. Um, we would take that one seventh ratio of every single thing we've added in there to get it to the 35 gallon yield and um, it would be the exact same as it is. 
And so you're able to do that in a finished cider because you guys are working with products that are not adding fermentable sugars. Exactly, yep. Um, we, we're gonna add actually um, a couple things, some sulfites just to be safe if there is any fermentable sugars um, maybe left in our uh, pear base. Just make sure we don't have any re-fermentation or anything as well. Um, it's a small amount, but it just makes sure that if there's any yeast uh, left alive in there, that we take care of that. And then you guys cold store as well? Uh, yes, we cold store everything. All right, Jordan, so we had about five gallons left that we were still working with. I know that we had talked briefly about increasing the sugar content. Um, what did you do to kind of wrap this up? Because this is phenomenal. Awesome, so yeah, um, where we left off, it was lacking a little bit of flavor. Um, I think the sugar really brought it out a little bit. So I added about a pound and a half of uh, cane sugar to kind of just like up intensify that flavor. So it wasn't super dry, it has a little bit of sweetness, but not too sweet in the end. Um, I added a little bit of citric acid as well to help with the mouthfeel. Um, a little bit more tannins just to kind of dry out and um, add a little tang to the mouth as well. Um, topped it off with the five gallons and I actually added a little bit more of the coconut and lime amaretti as well just to add a little bit more flavor boost too and um, that was pretty much it along with the five gallons of water there. Awesome. So can you tell me, again I understand that this is a trial batch, right? But it's important for other cider makers, breweries, anybody else in the beverage industry to understand that oftentimes it does take trial and error to really dial in the right flavor profile that they're trying to achieve. How many times did you guys kind of go back and forth and add and kind of adjust the recipe? Um, for this one specifically, it was one of our quicker ones actually. So it took us about two to three like times to stop, test it, try it. Um, I think we have a pretty good product, really good product on our hand after the third try here. Um, usually it takes a good five to eight tries, I would say, um, but we got it pretty quick on this one. I think it's a really good flavor profile. And so when you guys are creating a cider and trying to achieve those flavor profiles, do you guys just go all in and just throw in a bunch of like extract and a bunch of different natural ingredients? Or do you guys kind of start off at the low end and kind of incrementally increase until you achieve the ideal flavor profiles? For sure, yeah, we definitely start slow because um, once it's in there, you can't take it out. So the slower you go, I mean, take it ounce by ounce, I would recommend, this, at least for a small batch. Um, that's kind of what we did there for sure, take it slow. So what's the next step, Jordan? We have our finished cider. What are we doing next? So we're gonna pressurize this tank here so I have my CO2 hooked up. Okay. I'm gonna get it to about 15 PSI here to kind of push all of the cider down and out through this hose here and into my keg. So basically you're taking the finished cider from the holding tank and you're gonna pump it into this six stole using this tube and then you're also carbonating at the same time with the CO2 tank? Um, so we're gonna get everything in there and then we're gonna hook it up to our tap line. Okay. Um, that's gonna pressurize it even more there. Um, Cause I have to get it cold too. It's not the coldest product right now. Okay. Um, so then once we hook it up to the CO2 line or the um, tap line in the walk-in, we're gonna pump up that CO2 to about 30 PSI and give it a good shake. Um, it's gonna bind all the CO2 to the cider there. Um, and tomorrow it'll be ready to drink. Awesome. These guys should fill pretty quickly. Um, so this one, so it's gonna go in through here and these guys are already pressurized with CO2 from our keg washer. It's gonna, you can hear it, that's all the CO2 coming out. So as it goes in, it pushes the CO2 out. And then once it's full, you're gonna get a little bit of liquid coming out of here. So wash your feet there a little bit. Uh, yep. And then we have these ones in our walk in there. We'll hook them up, blast the CO2 and then shake them, get them really cold and One more question for you. What would you say to a fellow brewer, you know, somebody else that's in this industry, why would they use Amoretti? So if they were on the fence, like, ah, I'm just a little, mm, you know, what would you say to them to, 
to get them to kind of, you know, because you've had experience with our products. You've worked with them on multiple occasions in many different time, flavors. Yeah. So what would you tell them? I would say it tastes organic. It tastes 100% like you don't, it's an extract. So, I mean, it's very good. Um, I can see why people might have like a negative insight on it, but it will really take your flavor to the next level and it's 100% recommend for sure. So are we 100% backed by you, Jordan? You're 100% our only choice. <laughs> That's exactly what we like to hear.